Hello everybody, it's that college football guy here in another video. Yes, sun's up. I'm here in uh, Pulaski, Tennessee. I delivered my load. I actually didn't deliver my load to, I was going to go away to a town called Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Couldn't deliver it. I uh, had to go and drop it off in uh drop yard in Laverne. And then head down here where I ran out of hours. I had to pick up a trailer. It's like right over there. Hopefully. There's an empty spot. Hopefully the guy's been dropping off tonight and I gotta leave here at 2.30 in the morning to get to Conyers, Georgia by 7.30. It's already told them I'm not gonna make that because it's five hours for a four-hour slot. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about a schedule prediction video and we're talking about the Pac-12. Last year of the Pac-12? I hope not, but right now if Stanford and Cal go ruinedly the ACC, the Pac-12 is dead. It's officially dead. So this is the last year of it. So we're going to do our scheduled predictions. We do have a few subscriber schools in here, so I'm going to make notes about those schools, the regular schools that don't have a subscriber. I'm just going to blow through the wins and losses. And we'll talk about the conference championship game, Pac-12 fans. Some of you are going to be a little upset with what I predicted here. Some of you may not be. We're going to see what happens. All right, start off with the Arizona Wildcats. Um, subscriber school, who were, went 5-7 and seven last year. And the question is, is um, Jane DeLora, starting quarterback, had a great season. Can he continue that and follow it up? That's going to be a key to Arizona's um, play on there. Running back room, solid. Wider receiver should be solid. Defensively, that's the problem. It has to improve. 118th in FBS in scoring defense. Top 20 worst in points allowed, basically what that means. Your top five tacklers are gone, but there's players you can step in there. Can the secondary step up? That's going to be a key point here. So Arizona's schedule. Home against Northern Arizona, that's a win. At Mississippi State, cross Trump, that's a loss. Home against UTEP, that's a win. At Stanford, that's a win. Home against Washington, <laughs> loss. At USC, that's a loss. At Washington State is a loss. I debated on that one, but Washington State just has um, a little more depth. And he had the bye. Come out of the bye at home against Oregon State. You're going to beat Oregon State. Huge win for you. You're going to win that game. Home against UCLA. Guess what happens? UCLA overlooks you. You're going to beat them too. At Colorado. You're going to come off of those two games against a weak prime team. You're going to overlook Colorado and you're going to lose to Colorado. You're going to come back and the following week and lose at home to Utah, but go on the road at Arizona State and get the win, beating your in-state rival to finish 6-6, six 4-5 six, and five in conference. Next up, the aforementioned Arizona State. Okay, how they happen to them? Home against Southern Utah, that's a win. Home against Oklahoma State, yeah, that's a loss. Home against Fresno State, tough game. They should win that one. Home against USC, that's a loss. At Cal, I debate them. As a, Arizona State's one of the worst teams in the Pac-12. So basically, because I'm giving you the loss, you're losing that game because Cal's at home. That's the only reason I gave you the loss. Home against Colorado, you get the win. Only because you were at home. Then you get the bye. At Washington, that's a loss. Home against Washington State. This is a game that is going to surprise some people, but I'm actually picking you to beat Washington State. I think Washington State is going to overlook you at this point. You've gotten a taste of things you can do, and I think Kenny Dillingham is going to be able to have things more on track at this point. You're going to get the win. And then it's ugly the rest of the way. At Utah, loss. At UCLA, loss. Home against Oregon, loss. Home against Arizona, loss. To finish 4-8, and 2-7 and seven in conference. Next up, the California Golden Bears. Yeah, um, it is not going to be a good year to be a bear, Golden Bear. I said this when I did the preview for the AAC at North Texas. Cal doesn't know what conference they're in. And by the time this game kicks off, they still may not know what conference they're in. And I think because of that uncertainty or possibly of having to go to the ACC or whatever, I think it's going to play on players' minds. And I have them losing on the road at North Texas. Home against Auburn, that's a loss. Home against Idaho, that's a win. At Washington, that's a loss. Home against Arizona State, coin flip game, you're at home, you get the win. Home against Oregon State, that's a loss. At Utah, that's a loss. Then you get the bye. Home against USC, loss. At Oregon, loss. Home against Washington State, loss. At Stanford, as bad as you are, you have more talent than Stanford does. You're going to get the win there. And at UCLA, that's a loss. The first of the season, three and nine, two and seven in conference. Now, subscriber school, Colorado. Went 111 last year. I'm not going to bother going off the roster because the roster is different. 
Simple questions. Coach Prime can do a lot of things in manipulating, not manipulating, but getting players the best out of players. The question is, is that how much discipline is to be on this team? How much fear is on this team? You have to have the discipline and the fear as a coaching staff. To, this is the fact to keep these kids in line. Fear, but people don't like saying that. I've talked to a lot of coaches. Yeah, you have to have that reign of terror where you scare some of the kids, the ones who are, where that works on them. Will that work on this team? Some of you have Colorado going eight and four. Time for reality check. On the road at TCU, that's a loss. Home against Nebraska, Nebraska is better, more polished talent. This is the team. This is the time. The team hasn't played together, so the cohesion is going to be a major issue. You lose that game. Home against Colorado State, you're going to get the win. At Oregon, that's a loss. At USC, that's a loss. Home against USC, that's a loss. At Arizona State, you win home, I'm going to give you the win, but you're on the road, so that's a loss. To come back at home against Stanford, and you're going to beat Stanford. That's going to be a big win for you. Then you get the bye. At UCLA, that's a loss. Home against Oregon State, that's a loss. As I mentioned earlier, Arizona, you're at home. Arizona's going to overlook you, and you're going to beat Arizona. At Washington State, that's a loss. And at Utah, that's a loss. To finish 3-9, and 2-7 and seven in conference. Next up, Oregon, the Ducks. Subscriber school. Well, Oregon finished 10 and 3 last year. This is year two of the Dan Lanning era. How good can they be? Kenny, Kenny Dillingham, the OC, left for Arizona State. Um, Will Steen was the uh, OC at UTSA, Texas San Antonio. Will that on there? Bo Nix, who seems like he's been around forever. This is the last run for him. Can he keep this run going? The the running backs room should be, and the wide receivers should be good. The problem with Oregon, and it will I, I don't know how it's going to do, is that they have great depth at Oregon. But four of your five starters on the O-line are gone. Um, that's going to be an issue. The defense looks to be so, solid, good, maybe not spectacular. All right. Oregon, how'd they do? Home against Portland State, that's a win. At Texas Tech, if you watched the video I did, it's cross-country travel. It's underestimating Texas Tech. Oregon loses at Texas Tech. Home against Hawaii, that's a win. Home against Colorado, that's a win. At Stanford, that's a win. Then you get the bye week. At Washington, that's a win. Home against Washington State, that's a win. At Utah, you're going to lose the game to Utah. Home against Cal, that's a win. Home against USC, because you're at home, coin flip. You get the win. You're going to beat USC. At Oregon State, that's a win. Home against Oregon State, another coin flip game. You win that game. To finish the game 10-2, and 8-1 and one in conference. Next up is Oregon State. Finished 10-3 and three last year. DJ Oagalele, formerly of Clemson. Now he's here at Oregon State, not as bright of lights. Can he fix himself? He's the best quarterback prospect they've had in a long time. Can he get his mind right and perform on the field? That's going to be a huge question here. Um, the wide receiver and running back room looks good. The offensive line should be great. The defense last year was ridiculous. I mean, they were number one red zone defense in FBS at stopping stop scorers. But five of their seven top tacklers are gone. The pass rush needs to improve. They had 20 sacks as a team last year. That's got to be more. The secondary, though, should be very, very good. Um, so how is it going to perform for Oregon State? Home against San Jose State, that's a win. At UC Davis, that's a win. Home against San Diego State, that's a win. At Washington State, that's a win. Home against Utah, that's a loss, unfortunately. At Cal, that's a win. Home against UCLA. If you've been on the road, I'm going to give UCLA the win, but you're at home, so you get the win. Come out of the bye. At Arizona, you're going to coin flip game there. You're losing to Arizona, as mentioned earlier. At Colorado, that's a win. Home against Stanford, that's a win. Home against Washington. You're actually going to beat Washington in a huge win for your school. But they finish the season on the road and lose at Oregon to finish nine and three, six and three in conference. Now the Stanford Cardinal, another subscriber school finished three and nine last year. David Shaw out. Troy Taylor, former Sacramento state head coach in Sacramento state had an incredibly high powered offense in FCS, but Stanford does not have the offensive talent that is needed to run this at the FBS level. That is me working progress. Defensively, there's going to be issues. So it's not going to be a good year for the Stanford Cardinal. How bad? 
where you start on the season at on the road at Hawaii, you get the win, at USC, big loss, home against Sacramento State, Troy Taylor against his old team, but the players are there. If you had been on the road at Sacramento State, I actually would have picked Sacramento State to beat you. But you're at home, so you get the coin flip win. You are 2-1. and one. You don't win another game the rest of the year. Home against Arizona, loss. Home against Oregon, loss. Then the bye week. At Colorado, loss. Home against UCLA, loss. Home against Washington, loss. At Washington State, loss. At Oregon State, loss. Home against Cal, loss. Home against Notre Dame, loss. To finish 2-10, and 1-8 and eight in conference. Next up, UCLA, subscriber school. They finished 9-4 and four last year. DTR was an incredible quarterback, and he will be missed. He's on front of the NFL. The question is, is Dante Moore, Ethan Gerbers, Colin Schley, who's your starter? Because we still don't know who it is at this point. Top running back and your top three wideouts are gone. Hopefully the depth will be good there. The offensive line does need to improve a little bit, um, but it should be good. Um, the third down defense for UCLA has to improve. They were horrible on third down last year. That has to get better. Um, the linebackers are solid. The defensive line is good, but needs to improve a little bit. Secondary, though, for UCLA is very, very young. Very, very young. Can it hold up? Can it improve? Can it play to better than its young potential? We'll see. Right now, UCLA. At Coast, home against Coastal Carolina, that's a win. At San Diego State, that's a win. Home against NC Central, that's a win. At Utah, unfortunately for you, that's a loss. You've been at home, you want to give you the win, but you're on the road, that's a loss. Then you have the bye. Come out of the bye at home against Washington State, you get the win. At Oregon State, same situation as the Utah game. You're on the road, so you're getting the loss. At Stanford, you get a win. Home against Colorado, you get a win. At Arizona, again, road games, UCLA's problems. They're going to lose again at Arizona. Home against Arizona State, that's a win. At USC, another loss. And then home against Cal, you get the win to finish 8-4, and 5-4 four, and four in conference. Next, USC. Notes on the team, they were 11-3 last year. 11-1 going to the conference championship game, lost to Utah, and then lost to Tulane in one of the most embarrassing performances late in the game when they allowed them to come back. A Lincoln Riley offense is going to produce points. Caleb Williams is back. It's been pieces. He lost some key pieces here and there, but you're going to perform. The big thing is one thing. He has never had a, a good defense, solid defense at any point in his career. Are they going to have one now? I doubt it. And the fact is, the big thing is, they're still going to be a great team and win some games. But the big thing is, they can't stop the run. They cannot stop the run. And there are teams like Oregon and Oregon State who are run-dominant teams. Washington can be at times, but their number one rusher is gone. Uh, we'll get to that. So how did USC do? Well, home against San Jose State, that's a win. Home against Nevada, that's a win. Home against Stanford, that's a win. Then they get the bye. At Arizona State, that's a win. At Colorado, that's a win. Home against Arizona, that's a win. At Notre Dame, that's a win. Home against Utah, that's a win. Coin flip game. You've been on the road, you would have lost, but you're at home this time. Even with, on there, the problem is, is this game I still hardcore debated on. Even with camera rising, that Utah defense is ruthless. And they're going to cause problems. But because USC's at home, I'm giving them the nod in this one. But I'm begrudgingly doing it. At Cal, that's a win. At Washington, home against Washington, that's a win. At Oregon, you're on the road. You're not getting the help. You're losing to Oregon. And then you finish the season at home with a win against UCLA to finish 11-1, and 8-1 and in conference. Next up, Utah, two-time defending conference champs. Starts off the season at home against Florida. I know Cam Rising's not going to be there, but Anthony Richardson isn't for Florida there either. And Florida's got to travel. You understand this is the first time since what? The 90s? 93, I think it was? That Florida's gone outside the state of Florida to play a non-conference game on the road? It's been 20 years. I don't care if Cam Rising isn't there. Swamp Florida, high altitude Utah. It's still not going to matter. I'm still picking Utah to beat Florida. I picked Florida to beat Utah last year. Everybody thought it was crazy because of cross-country travel that they were going to beat them. They did. Even with Cam Rising gone, I'm still picking Utah to beat Florida. At Baylor, that's a win. Home against Weber State, that's a win. Home against UCLA, that's a win. At Oregon State, that's a win. 
Then you get the bye. Out of the bye at home against Cal, that's a win. At USC, only because you're on the road, you get the loss. Home against Oregon, that's a win. Home against Arizona State, that's a win. At Washington. Unfortunately, you're losing that game too. Because it's Washington on the road. That's what cost you. At Arizona, you get the win. And home against Colorado to finish the year, you get the win. To finish 10-2, and 7-2 and two in conference. Next up, the affirmation Washington Huskies. Subscriber school. They went 11-2 and two last year. Kalen DeBoer had an incredible job in year one. Can it continue in year two? I mean, the number one passing offense is back as Michael Penix is back. And this, <laughs> my receivers are going to get numbers out the wazoo. It's going to be crazy. Um, the offensive line, they lost some stars on the O-line. Um, but the offensive line last year, Washington, was ridiculous. Number one in fewest tackles for loss allowed and second in fewest sacks allowed. They've lost a couple of starters, so the depth step up. It's going to be a slight step back, but I don't think it's going to be much. Like I said, the wide receivers are going to be solid. The defensive line, the linebackers for Washington are going to be on point. They're going to do a great job, but the secondary has got to show up. Um, that is, could be a serious problem for this team later on. So how do Washington do? Home against Boise State, that's a win. Home against Tulsa, that's a win. At Michigan State, that's a win. Home against Cal, that's a win. At Arizona, that's a win. Then you get the bye. Home against Oregon. I did this when you did the Oregon video. Oregon part. You're going to lose at home to Oregon. Home against Arizona State, you get the win. At Stanford, you get the win. At USC, you're on the road. That's why you get the loss. Home against Utah. You've been on the road. And, uh, at home against Utah, you're going to win that game because you're at home. At Oregon State. Imagine the Oregon State one. You're losing that game because you're on the road. These, all these teams are pretty close together. And then finish the season at home against Washington State and get the win to finish 9-3, and 6-3 and three in conference. And lastly, Washington State. They're a team that some people are overlooking on them, but they're not going to be a doormat. And we'll get into that. At Colorado State, they get the win. Home against Wisconsin. Excuse me. <laughs> home against Wisconsin. Luke Fickle, you're going to lose that game. Wisconsin's coming cross country up to Washington. They're actually going to beat Washington State and beat Jim Pullman. Home against Northern Colorado, that's a win. Home against Oregon State, unfortunately, you're going to lose that game. Oregon State just got more talent than you. Then you get the bye. Out of the bye at UCLA, that's a loss. Home against Arizona, you're at home for that game, not on the road, so I gave you the win. It's a coin flip game. Home against Oregon, that's a loss. At Arizona State, I did this piece of Oregon State on there. You're going to overlook Arizona State because they're played bad, but Kenny Dillingham will figure out a way you're losing that game. Home against Stanford, you get the win. At Cal, get the win. Home against Colorado, at the win. But on the road at Washington, you get the loss to finish 6-6, six and 4-5 six, and five in conference. So what does this mean for the standings? Well, the Pac-12, no divisions. As you haven't figured it out yet, we'll go from the bottom up. Stanford, 2-10, and 1-8 and eight in conference. Arizona State, excuse me, Colorado, 3-9, and 2-7 and seven in conference. Arizona State, 4-8, and 2-7 and seven in conference. Arizona State's above Colorado because they beat them. Um, California three and nine, two and seven in conference because they beat. I do, I do the when the teams have the same conference record, it's based on who beat who. That's how that goes. Arizona six and six, four and five in conference. Washington State six and six, four and five in conference. UCLA eight and four, five and four in conference. Washington nine and three, six and three in conference. Oregon State nine and three, six and three in conference. Utah ten and two, seven and two in conference. USC eleven and one, eight and one in conference. Oregon ten and two, eight and one in conference. The reason why, I'm going back here to double check my numbers so I don't feel like a complete freaking idiot, is, oh, and of course, both finishing 8-1. and one. Oregon's above USC, Oregon's other loss was to Texas Tech, let me sure I remember that correctly. So it's Oregon and USC for the conference championship game. Oregon's defense is on point. USC's defense is non-existent. I'm picking Oregon to beat USC to win the Pac-12 championship. But why don't you let me know in your, in your thought. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So thanks everybody for watching the video. If you haven't done already, please smash the like button. Hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. It helps the video seen by more people. Comment on the video. The Pac-12 fans, you're not happy about this. I already can tell. 
I can hear my feel my ears burning right now from some of the comments from people. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments about this. And if you haven't done already, please subscribe to the channel. On the way to 500 subscribers, slowly and surely on the crawl with thousands, we can make some things happen. I want to hear your comments, good or bad. It doesn't bother me. And I always have the challenge out. If you think you can do a better job predicting the schedule of what I do, because tell me any, and this is a serious question asked my subscribers and everybody watching this video. Is there anybody else on YouTube who's doing college football predictions? Get this here. Who is predicting as many games as I do? And then at the end of the year, going back against those predictions and seeing what my win-loss record is. I don't know if anybody else is doing this many. They pick games because most of these guys pick the predictions but not be held liable for their actions at the end of the year. I'm willing to put myself, make myself accountable for it. Anybody else willing to? So, like I said, think on there. Thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. I got to get something to eat. Promise at 1.30 in the morning, I got to get up. 1.30 Central Time. It is... What the hell time is it? It's almost 6. I'm going to have less than 7 hours sleep. Get up. Get the truck ready. Hook up to the trailer and do this crazy drive and be in Georgia by 7.30 in the morning on Thursday. Which is still, in me traveling to Georgia and doing this early start, still puts me th four and a half hours ahead of my, actually be five and a half hours ahead of my delivery when it was to be central time. The load I was really supposed to deliver was supposed to deliver at noon tomorrow in Murfreesboro. Instead, I'm doing a load all the way to Atlanta and be there a lot earlier. Way things go. So thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Everybody, Everybody's having a safe Wednesday. Lord knows it's hot. Be safe out there and please... Be good to each other.